Howdy, folks. Happy Labor Day. You know, when I was young, I, I thought uh, nothing of working 12 hours a day, and uh, today the thought is even more revolting. <laughs> well, this is Pat Buttram, uh, happy to be back for delicious double mint chewing gum with Just Entertainment. Labor Day is a U.S. federal holiday celebrated on the first Monday in September to honor and recognize the contributions of laborers to the development and achievements of the United States. As trade unions and labor movements reached their peak during the Industrial Revolution, the Central Labor Union and the Knights of Labor organized the first parade in New York City. In 1887, Oregon was the first state to make it an official public holiday. By the time it became an official federal holiday in 1894, 30 states in the U.S. officially celebrated Labor Day. On Labor Day in 1957, Life Magazine's cover featured Major David Simmons and his hot air balloon flight, also talking about the Asiatic flu threat. Meanwhile, the Saturday Evening Post wrote about the drastic toll life without parole prison sentences wrought and a warden's plea for drastic reform in the American concept of punishment. Well, here I am, back from my vacation, feeling like everybody does after a vacation, all tuckered out. <laughs> you know, though, it's, uh, it's great to get back to something restful, work. Uh, I went down home to Winston County, uh, which is uh, still right where I left it 20 years ago. Uh, uh, the fellows there, they still roll their own cigarettes, uh, only not as good as they used to. They, uh, I don't know, they, they can't seem to get the hang of uh, putting them filter tips on. Them. <laughs> but uh, I'll tell you, there's one advantage. Uh, there's one advantage to living down home, though. Uh, there's no place to go that you shouldn't. Uh, now, Paula Richards, she's back from her vacation, too, still slender, smiling, and single, and... Uh, <laughs> the boys in the quartet, they're all as tan as uh, the bottom of a bacon powder biscuit. <laughs> and uh, the men of the Buttram Symphony, they're, uh, they're back from the sand bars to their music bars. You know? <laughs> Seeing as how Paula spent part of her vacation in uh, St. Louis, uh, everybody's going to join in on Meet Me in St. Louis, Louis. <laughs> Originally hosted by Gene Autry, Just Entertainment was, in 1957, hosted by psychic Pat Buttram. Pat Buttram was born in Addison, Alabama on June 19, 1915. The seventh child of a Methodist minister, he was set to follow in his father's footsteps when, just before his 18th birthday, he attended the 1933 World Fair in Chicago. Station WLS sent an announcer to the fairgrounds for a remote broadcast interviewing fair attendees and the announcer picked Pat as a typical visitor from the South. To everyone's delight and surprise, his comic observations and bits of country wisdom kept the announcer and the audience in stitches. WLS hired him for their national barn dance program, giving him a nationwide audience. Pat soon became friends with Gene Autry. He went to Hollywood in the 1940s, appearing in more than 40 Gene Autry pictures, and became a regular on the Melody Ranch radio program. He later played Mr. Haney on CBS TV's Green Acres. Uh, you know, uh, seems like most everybody must have been uh, chewing double mint gum on his vacation, because I'll tell you, everywhere I went, I, I saw folks buying that uh, familiar green package with the uh, five sticks of delicious double mint chewing gum. Of course, uh, that happens all year round, because I'll tell you, double mint is a all-seasons taste treat. It tones up your mouth, you know, uh, puts life into it, helps uh, the sparkle of your teeth, helps make your breath fresh and pleasant, too. And, uh, well, I tell you, it's a taste tonic after meals for you, because uh, chewing double mint aids digestion and just helps settle tense nerves for you. There's no way I know of that a uh, a nickel will go further than uh, for a package of double mint chewing gum. Hours of flavor happiness there. Uh, when I was down home, I found it uh, 
they'd made one or two concessions to progress there. The, uh, for example, the jukebox at the ice cream parlor had a new record on it, uh, by the light of the silvery moon, uh, sung by Billy Murray and the Peerless Quartet. <laughs> Background music on the musical saw. <laughs> well, I guess you already know without my telling you, today we salute Labor Day. You know, when I was real young, I had a notion that uh, Labor Day meant uh, everybody had to work. Well, that... Uh, that explained why nobody could find me. I, I hid out all day. It was a long time before I uh, caught on that it, uh, it was a holiday. Uh, that's the way with some people. You know, they, uh, they work harder at trying to get out of work than if they just went ahead and just worked. Uh, I've always advocated a minimum output of physical effort. Uh, <laughs> as some folks have sort of suspected. <laughs> so here I wind up on the radio. Oh. All right, if, if this puts me in the leisure class, well, uh, how come I'm here working today and everybody else is knocking off? Huh? <laughs> and it just shows a fellow can outwit himself sometimes. You know? Anyway, I'll say hats off to the the folks that get the job done and keep things running in this country. Labor Day is for them, and I I think it's nice it always comes on Monday, you know. Well, I've been away for a whole month, but I remember that uh, right about now it's always buttram bonus time. <laughs> well, for Labor Day, I don't know of a better buttram bonus than... Uh, to tell you how to enjoy your job more. <laughs> There's two ways to spell labor. Uh, L-A-B-O-R, that's one way, and L-A-B-O-U-R, that's the hard way. That, uh, <laughs> well, it's, it's harder because in L-A-B-O-U-R, you have to put you into it. <laughs> and, uh, labor's real work with you in it, please. <laughs> I remember Grandpa Buttram, he talked about... Uh, the working man he used to. Uh, of course, nowadays, the working man's become a laboring man. They figure it's uh, more dignified to labor than to work, I guess. I don't know. When Grandpa worked, he used to sweat. Today, we perspire. Uh, but what with the five-day weeks and the coffee breaks and air conditioning and power tools and electric typewriters, I don't know, it's getting so we don't even perspire. <laughs> I remember us kids, we used to play football, 11 men on a team. <laughs> Today they have 11 men on offense and 11 more on defense. <laughs> they, uh, seems like nobody feels like working a full 60 minutes even when they're playing. <laughs> now, I, I know what you women folks, uh, I know what you women are thinking. You're thinking our work is different. Well, you're right, it sure is. Uh, I remember my grandma, she'd do a week's wash for a family of ten, and uh, then she'd cook breakfast, get the kids off to school, make the bed, sweep, dust, clean, be dressed and uh, ready to go shopping by half past nine. <laughs> I mean, half past nine that same morning, too. <laughs> so when you think your job's rough, uh, you just ask grandpa or grandma about labor in the old days when it was, it was known as work. <laughs> You'll perspire just hearing about it. <laughs> as a matter of fact, I'm getting tired just thinking about it. Uh, so let's uh, get our minds off of such a subject as work by listening to Paula Richards as she sings, I'm in the mood for love. I'm in the mood for love simply because 